And we don't need Jay-Z to fill up arenas, you know. We do it the old-fashioned way. We do it the old-fashioned way, folks. We fill them up because you love what we're saying and you want to make America great again. That's about it. Let's bring in Steve Schmidt, Republican strategist and an MSNBC contributor, with a big welcome to you. Let's book, look back to 2012, okay? We've got Mitt sure. Romney at this point in the cycle playing to really big crowds, and his advisors were, by all accounts, shocked that he lost. Do you think that crowds like this translate to success? Are they an indicator of turnout? No. Look, the campaigns now, when you look at the number of people that have already voted, the early voting, the turnout operations that the campaigns are underway with now, Democrats just have a big advantage in it. They have a big technological advantage, they have a big turnout advantage. And so this is all now science, right? This is the work of the campaigns. And you think about a political campaign for president, you got to think about it like an iceberg. About 10% of the iceberg is above the waterline. That's what you see. That's what we see on TV. 90% of the mass of that iceberg is below the waterline. And that's what's going on in the states, in the field offices, is turning out the voters. And it's a way from where the TV cameras are. Does Trump have the depth in his no. iceberg? So is that an indicator right there about success yeah. in election Look, in a, in a close election, organization counts. And the Trump campaign, Stuart Stevens, who's the strategist for Mitt Romney's campaign, and he's analogized the Trump campaign you know, to essentially a rock concert tour. And they're traveling around the country, they're doing big rallies, but they just don't have the mechanisms. And But for the Republican National Committee, they'd really have no political operation at all. And Trump has just announced that he's canceling his scheduled uh, event in Wisconsin tomorrow. Does that mean he's seeding defeat? Yes. That's it? That's it. Okay. Uh, is there anything that he can do this weekend that is really going to change the map we're just looking at there? I mean, don't you think by this point voters have made up their minds? They have, 100%. Um, and the campaigns now are about getting those voters out to the polls, making sure that your people have the endurance to wait on long lines, they don't walk off the lines, uh, they do what is necessary to get those, to get those ballots in. So given your vast experience advising Republican campaigns, were you to be advising Donald Trump, what would you say, you've got to do this this weekend? Is there anything? Well, look, I think when you look at this, when you look at where the race is right now, Hillary Clinton's going to be elected the 45th president of the United States. And so now it's time, particularly because of the rhetoric from Donald Trump about the rigged election, about his assaults on the process by which we choose their leaders, um, I think they need to spend some serious time preparing concession speech. Um, and being focused on initiating in a dignified manner the peaceful transition of power which takes place on January 20th. That process commences when the losing candidate picks up the phone, calls the winning candidate, the first person who addresses Hillary Clinton on Tuesday night as Madam President-elect that matters is Donald Trump. And he's indicated uh, that he has no intention mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of conceding this election in a normal manner. And it's very dangerous for American democracy. So you're, you're telling him this is what he should do, but what do you expect he will do in the fallout? I, I, don't, I don't know what he'll do. Um, it has been a highly unusual campaign. When you look at uh, all of the things that have been outside the norms of this, the intimations of violence, uh, the threats and intimidation towards a free press, the questioning of the legitimacy of our electoral system, uh, the fact that Republicans have been cheerleading uh, the actions of a hostile foreign power, Russia, with regard to the email hacks, uh, the intervention of the FBI director 11 days uh, from, the, from, the, from the election, and now the serial leaking within the FBI like a secret police organization from some banana republic. These are so far outside the normal boundaries of American politics that when this election ends, there will be downrange consequences for it. I mean, the campaign has been so mean, so vile, uh, so small, so diminishing uh, to, a, to a great country. And we'll have an impact, you know, on our civics after it's over, to, for to, sure. To the level of this is a turning point in American politics, does it have the power to be that effective? I think you have every possibility to see a rupture inside the Republican Party. Uh, the alt-right movement, uh, which has surfaced above the waterline as part of this campaign, uh, cannot coexist peacefully uh, with the decent elements in the Republican Party who believe in conservatism uh, but reject the racism, the xenophobia, uh, the misogyny that we've, that we've seen play out all across, the, all across this campaign. And, and we thought the rise of the Tea Party was an issue in terms of a fissure in the Republican Party. You think it could be even greater than Look, that? I think that I think it's very unfair 
to compare the alt-right movement to the Tea Party, and I think the Tea Party was always misunderstood as a political phenomenon. It was as much a reaction to the George W. Bush presidency and a Republican Congress and the part the two played in running up the national debt to the level that it was raised to, the aftermath of the financial crisis, the trillion dollar bailouts to the too big to fail banks when regular people, 13 million of them losing their homes, 12 million people losing their, losing their jobs. And I think there was legitimate anger, legitimate frustration. What we have seen surface as a part of this campaign and mainstreamed as normal is something that two years ago would have been unimaginable. So how do you get that back into the body?